Next, what we're going to do is we are going to use the graph of a one-to-one -one function to graph its inverse function. As you can see in this graph, this is not only a function because it passes the vertical line test, but it also passes the horizontal line test. Therefore, we know it's one-to-one, -one, and therefore, we also know that it has an inverse. Uh, to find the inverse of a graph, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to actually the definition of how to find an inverse function. And what we've learned in the past is that to find an inverse function, all you have to do is switch x and y. So therefore, in the order pair that's given to us, uh, negative 3 comma negative 2, the inverse of this function will have the ordered pair negative 2 comma negative 3. And the reason that, that makes sense is because obviously if you look, the x value for the original function becomes the y value of the inverse and the y value of the original function becomes the x of the inverse. Where if you take the next order pair, uh, negative one comma zero, its inverse will be zero comma negative one. And then lastly, four comma two will also have a point that is its inverse and it will be the order pair two comma four. I hope I put the point in the right spot. It is two comma four. And then all you have to do is very similar to our other function, is kind of connect the dots. Now one thing that's also characteristic to the graph of an inverse function is that all inverse functions are reflexed about this line right here. Sorry for my human error in making this line. But this line is the line y is equal to x. So if you were to fold about that line, your red and your blue graph, or your function and your inverse function should overlap. So that's basically how to find the inverse of a graph uh, of a function. Good luck.